Hello kids, Daddy's here. Right now, Daddy will show you a romance film from 2008, titled The Reader. Be a good kid and subscribe to Daddy's channel. Spoilers ahead, watch out. This film sets in Neustadt, West Germany, 1958. A teenage boy named Michael Berg is walking along the street in the middle of the rain. He feels sick while wandering the streets and begins to vomit. A woman approaches him, helps him and she reappears with a bucket of water to flush his vomit. Her name is Hannah Schmitz as she begins to hug him and says, it's okay. After a few days, Michael is going back to visit Hannah with a small bunch of flowers as his thanks. She asks him about his condition and a bit of conversation happens between them. As Michael goes out and the door is slightly open while Hannah takes off her clothes. He watches her, riveted, and she looks at him. In response, he panics and runs out of her flat. He goes out by the tram and sees Hannah who works as a tram conductress. She doesn't see him as she works. Meanwhile, he doesn't have the courage to greet her. He quietly comes to her flat, and Hannah is suddenly standing behind him, carrying a box of coal and asking him to help her pick up more buckets down there. Afterward, he comes in with the two buckets of coal, his face and clothes filthy. And she prepares him a bath to clean up his body. She gives him a towel, but suddenly puts her body against his back, and he realizes she's naked as she begins to play with his wiener. He turns, faces her and they kiss. After school, he always gets home early and straightly head to Hannah's flat. He becomes an obsessed to have sex with her, it's like a new habit. It is such a strange for Michael, he has been there three times and she hasn't told him her name. Then, she tells him her name, him either. They're getting intimate. One day, she asks him about what language he has learned in school. And he shows his skill to read some of the different languages to her. She is impressed with him. He gives her a book, just in case she wants to read it. As Hannah replies that she'd rather listen to him, he becomes a reader for her. At night in the tram, Michael sits in the second carriage. He looks up in the conductress as Hannah. She turns around, looks at him, and turns away. Michael is waiting for her as Hannah comes up, but she says nothing. It shows that she is upset about the thing, she was in the first carriage, but why did he sit in the second one? They have a fight, and Michael goes away. They come back, trying to forget what happened between them yesterday. Hannah makes a new rule for him. She's changing the order, he must read her first, then they make love. He starts to read aloud for her. Some of books like The Odyssey by Homer. Sometimes later, he reads her a book until she's in tears. Michael is such a good reader for her. Another day, when Hannah is sewing while Michael is reading a comedy book for her. Two of them turn into laughing. She paid what he's worth, and they spend much of their time together having sex in her flat. They plan for a short trip by riding a bicycle to the countryside. As they stop and get into a church where the kids are singing. Hannah cries and touched by their voices. One day, a new student comes. She looks pretty until all the boys in the class feel impressed with her. She sits beside Michael, and they begin to introduce themselves. Her name is Sophie, and Michael can't even take his eyes off her. The summertime comes, the students enjoy their time by swimming, so with Michael and Sophie too. But she feels disappointed at him, why he leaves too early. He heads up to Hannah's flat while she is sewing. He kisses her as he gets out a book and reads for her. As time goes by, Hannah learns that she was promoted to a clerical job at the tram company's office because of her performance. Like he always did, Michael comes to Hannah's flat. The door is open, and all the things inside are none. She suddenly leaves her flat, without telling him. It's such a painful. The story goes in 1966, where Michael is at Heidelberg University Law School. As life must go on, and so with him, he becomes a law student. As part of a special seminar, the students observe a trial of several former SS guards accused of letting 300 Jewish women perish in a burning church with his professor. It's shown, the judges are already in place. Michael and the others take places in and watch the trial. When the judge repeats the name of Hannah Schmitz, Michael looks up, he is rigid, blank, just staring. Michael is stunned to see that Hannah is one of the defendants. The students are now rattling around informally in the big lecture room with Professor Roll. They discuss the thing that they can learn from Hannah's case. He asks his students to join the next one. In the second trial, the key evidence in the trial is the testimony of Alana Mather, author of a memoir relating how she survived. In the book, she describes a selection process. At the end of the month's labor, every month, 60 inmates were selected. 
They were picked out to be sent from the satellite camp back to Auschwitz. And Hannah was a part of that process. It means that Hannah was sending those women to their deaths to be killed. As she tries to explain to Judge that there were new arrivals. New women were arriving all the time, so of course, she had to move some of the old ones on. The witness is presented to identify all of them and point them out, including Hannah who took part in that selection. She describes how Hannah had women from the camp read to her in the evenings. And Hannah usually often chooses the weak and sick women. She picked them out, but then she dispatched them to be killed. Meanwhile, Michael comes quietly into the back of the room as the trial goes on. He sits alone, in despair and frustrated about what he heard. As Michael back, and the next witness is presented, that's Alana Mather. The judge asks her to talk about the night in church. She explains that the guards took the best quarters in the priest's house. But they let them sleep in a church. There was a bombing raid, in the middle of the night. Then they could see burning beams and crash to the floor. Everyone rushed to the doors. But the doors had been locked on the outside, so everyone died, except her. The next trial is ongoing. The judge asks Hannah why she didn't unlock the church's door. She replies that they were guards and their job was to guard the prisoners. They couldn't just let them escape. It means that she lets them die rather than risk letting them escape. After that, the judge gives him evidence, it's a report that she wrote and other guards say she was in charge that night. At first, she denies it, so the judge needs a sample of her handwriting. She is in silence for a while as Michael begins to realize that she can't even read, so that's why she asked him to read for her. It's such a worst statement, Hannah prefers to admit that she wrote the report than tell the truth she can't read. Afterward, Michael tells his professor the case. He has a piece of information concerning one of the defendants. Something they're not admitting. Professor Roll answers that he's perfectly clear he has a moral obligation to disclose it to the court. It feels like he can't do that, because the defendant herself is determined to keep that information secret, she is ashamed. And the professor asks him to talk with that defendant. Michael goes to the prison where Hannah is there, he is led in the group towards the visiting room. As he walks towards the room, he changes his mind. He begins to turn back, the day finally comes, the announcement of the punishment that will be received by Hannah. Hannah Schmidt's guilty of murder in 300 cases. In view of she owns admissions, so, she is in a different category. The court sentences the accused her to imprisonment for life. And Michael in tears. The story goes on years later. A guard tells her that Hannah has a mail, she is surprised. She opens the box and finds a huge batch of cassette tapes in a tape machine. When she plays, she hears Michael's voice who reads for her like he used to do when they were together. Time by time, it becomes like a habit. Michael always sends her his voice records while Hannah plays them all the time. Hannah goes to the library counter and borrows a book. She spends her days in prison learning how to read by using Michael's recording. One day, Michael has a letter from Hannah. He is touched by her letter even it's only a thanks card. The story goes in West Berlin, 1988. Michael has a phone call from prison staff that Hannah Schmitz is coming up for release very soon. She has no family and no friends, and he is her only contact. He comes to visit Hannah. After the years, they finally meet. Hannah looks old with her white hair, and she says to him, you've grown up, kid. Michael tells her that he has prepared everything for her after she is released. He also tells her about his daughter. As Hannah says that she has learned to read. The conversation starts to end, Michael will pick her up next week. Then by way of saying goodbye, they begin to separate. The day comes, he walks towards the prison and carries a bunch of flowers. He asks the guard that he looks for Hannah, but, he's only to find out that Hannah has hanged herself. She has left a tea tin with cash inside and a note asking Michael to deposit the money in a bank account to the daughter who wrote the book and survived that night in the church. Michael travels to New York City, where he meets that girl. He confesses his relationship with Hannah. He tells her about the suicide note and one thing she should know is Hannah was illiterate. As she tells Michael there is nothing to be learned from the camps and refuses the money, whereupon Michael suggests that it be donated to any Jewish welfare organization dealing with literacy. And she keeps the tea tin which is similar to the one stolen from her in Auschwitz. Michael asks his daughter, Julia, to visit a place. They land up at a church. They stand at a deserted graveside, and it shows a cemetery of Hannah Schmitz. As Michael starts to tell the story to Julia about how they first met. That's all for today kids. 
help daddy by like and subscribe. See you on the next videos.